or okay sir actually all uh, okay hello good evening today topic will be uh, femoral acetabular impingement as commonly known as f fai that's a very common term now for a femoral acetabular impingement in the last lecture we were discussing regarding uh, femoral acetabular impingement this was the actually entity which is coined by professor ranal gans i had told you last time that he spent his lifetime of convincing all the people across the world regarding femoral acetabular impingement and uh, this is ranal professor ranal gans the for years and decades idiopathic osteoarthritis was the leading cause of the hip arthritis but he he clearly put it in his uh, academic uh, and everything that this is nothing like a, uh, nothing like that because this is always this arthritis is secondary due to fai fai he proved uh, this entity Uh, the Solomon actually in 1976 was uh, said that his osteoarthritis is a biological or metabolic or inflammatory or mechanical cause. 90% cases of the osteoarthritis at that time. Uh, mechanical cause of OA: abnormal abnormalities at the femoral head neck junction or acetabulum. as a result of either femoral acetabular impingement or dysplasia these are the two main cause leading of osteoarthritis so again i am repeating either this is due to femoral head neck junction which will come to all the x rays how it is at the junction or acetabulum as a result of either femoral acetabular impingement or sometimes it is due to the dysplasia where the uh, most peop uh, people are born with abnormal acetabulum abnormal acetabulum and relation between the acetabulum and the femur and dysplastic hips and these are the uh, people who really worked hard on this entity and again you see the gans is on the top what is patho anatomy of this pa uh, patients a bony abutment of the proximal femur and acetabulum rim at the rim which starts slowly a chondral delamination because there are uh, we uh, we do a lot of uh, work, uh, activity and a maximum at the level of the maximum activity where it comes into the action action at the level of the acetabular margin that is the time the chondral delamination starts it produces repeated microtrauma chondro label injury this is very common and that's why gans used to repair actually the labrum of this very young patients actually with i will show you how uh, he used to do it with the anterior uh, anterior dislocation which is uh, uh, he had performed and he has shown the result of anterior dislocation he is the man who uh, devised this anterior dislocation surgery and uh, approach different approach so chondral uh, once the chondral labral injury occurs It, it starts osteoarthritis. That is a precursor of osteoarthritis. So, chondral delamination, micro trauma, leading to chondral labral injury, and that leads to osteoarthritis of the hip. This is the pathology of uh, this FAI. Uh, now, this early path, uh, early pathological contact during the hip motion between the skeletal prominence of the acetabulum and the femur that limits the physiological hip range motion. typically flexion excessive flexion and internal rotation that is the time it comes into the action and he divided this uh, he, uh, he classified femoral acetabular impingement in three varieties one is known as a pincer second is known as cam and third is mex so we will say what is mean by pincer what is mean by cam and what is mean by mex so what are the predisposing factor factor for fai pathis because there is a abnormal uh, configuration of the femoral head which is repeatedly gives the trauma congenital dysplasia i told you is a very very common entity uh, slip capital epiphysis can produce the fai malunited fracture where there is a abnormal configuration takes place avian with abduction hinge phenomena retroverted acetabulum this again very common and prominent head neck junction which does not allow the head to go inside the acetabulum and it goes repeatedly hitting the acetabular margin labrum labrum so proposed etiologies uh, etiologies of this are abnormal anatomy of the prominent head neck junction acetabulum over coverage like a protrusion 
okay and third is unusual stress carpet layer with a repeated flexion adduction internal rotation gets a damaged so this classification of uh, fai pincer impingement cam impingement and mixed mixed picture pincer this is something like uh, the holding the uh, one of this instrument something like this called as a pin it is a pincer so we'll come to this <coughs> pincer time fai abut abutment between the over over covered acetabulum and the femoral head neck junction leading to labral injury calcification degenerative change, changes posterior leverage posterior leverage on the on the acetabulum rim at the head neck junction then you get posterior inferior cartilage damage that's called as a countercoup injury we'll just get into the figures then only you will know it now if you look very carefully okay this is the uh, labral part of it this is a uh, anterior labrum this is a posterior labrum okay what happens i told you over coverage of the acetabulum that is a pincer is like a pin, pincer okay so these are additional over coverage of the acetabulum acetabulum would have stopped here but there is a over coverage of the acetabulum so when you flex and internal rotate this parts get starts getting abut against against and look at that uh, so in a, and a, as the flexion and uh, flexion and internal rotation you see there is a damage at the junction junction between the head and neck junction this area is starts getting the getting the damage of the labral repeated trauma labral in, condral injury followed by labral injury followed by osteoarthritis and this is a classical example of over coverage of the acetabulum that is called pincer pincer we'll come to cam later on but you remember exactly what is meant by pincer it is over coverage so what happens during this so the you you see this amount of this uh, taken place and you sometimes uh, get a posteriorly because repeatedly anterior dipping and now you see the reduction of the joint speaking speaking again in posteriorly and that is known as counter coup injury so you always you have a injury here repeatedly at, at the head neck junction and repeated uh, once it happens the additional you will start injuring the posterior inferior part of the acetabulum that's called as a countercoup countercoup injury so this is very very common with a pincer pincer tie so you see the extensive acetabular coverage leading to the head neck junction you see the amount of impingement it takes place impingement it continuously hits and you know how much amount of every day you do how much amount of activity activity and that's a pincer so what is the common in this pincer these are middle age to older age the uh, females are common with pincer seen in lot of ballet dancer because they have excessive additional movement they are absolutely hyperlax people so you have seen them uh, on the uh, movies how much amount of uh, flexion rotation what type of all uh, horrible uh, movements they do it in the hip so it is they are bound to get this bound to get this uh, primary radiographic signs are going to be coxa profunda protrusive acetabulum acetabular retrovers decrease index extrusion index neutral acetabular uh, neutral uh, acetabular index and posterior wall sign and posterior inferior cartil cartilage abrasion and that's a countercoup the one by one all this all the signs we will show you what uh, uh, what mean by pincer in this group of patients so important to take a very high quality radiograph in the olden time we did not had the facilities of we had ordinary x ray but after the digital x rays came we were able to identify more better a better view of this, this and anatomical landmarks were were better much better so we take a what is called as a supine view in 15 degrees of internal rotation and the beam is at the level of the symphysis it is usually distance is taken about 1.2 meters that is the normal distance they keep it for a pelvis x ray and the lateral x ray is done shoot through so the opposite hip is flexed 
the uh, positive is flexed so that the uh, tube can be passed exactly at the level of the groin at the level of the adductor uh, adductor tendon roughly adductor tendon which you can palpate extremely well uh, well and then uh, that will be the right focus right focus and the, the x-ray plate should be exactly perpendicular to the rays which you are projecting projecting slight obliquity will be difficult so the lateral x-ray is always difficult uh, difficult in the in these patients but fortunately these are young patients we are doing and that's what reason we were uh, we were able to get a good x-ray at least for uh, our analysis so first sign we will go by one by one signs in a pin, in a pincer <coughs> cross over sign what is mean by cross over sign the anterior and posterior wall of a normal hip meets at the lateral projection of the acetabular row that is at the maximum corner it meets anterior and posterior anterior is in the front posterior is behind so they meet each other at the last corner point when anterior wall and posterior wall meet caudal to the roof caudal to the roof and that is called crossover crossover occur and that indicates the acetabulum is retroverted so i will go to the x ray and then again come back to this then you will realize what it what i mean uh, just follow this now uh, this is a tear drop that's the most lateral margin of the acetabulum you have to follow the anterior lip this is the anterior lip coming here and this is the posterior lip from the ischial margin and that's a posterior, posterior lip they are not crossing each other they are not crossing each other so they are meeting at this level and if they start meeting if they start meeting towards the caudal side more the caudal side more will be the retroversion retroversion and this is a diagrammatic figure the diagrammatic figure that is the anterior lip anterior lip of the acetabulum and that's a posterior lip of the acetabulum and they have crossed here now this the, this is a real uh, x ray picture and that is the anterior lip going here very very clearly crystal seen crystal clear seen and that is a posterior look at the from the ischium that's a posterior and it has crossed roughly at the one third level one third and this hip is retroverted the, the acetabulum is retroverted so i'm going back to the uh, x ray so crossover anterior posterior uh, posterior wall or lip what you call is a normal they meet at the lateral projection of the acetabulum when they meet towards the caudal side that is known as a crossover sign indicate retroversion of the acetabulum is it clear to all of you yes sir yes sir so this is the first sign suggest these are the people who develop a fai now if you take a single projection these are cadaveric specimen single projection then there is there is nothing like cross it looks like that is okay it's just a little marginal marginal it has taken place but the same patients if you take this x ray pelvis including both hips there is a crossover sign which is there and the more on slightly on the caudal side that is the reason we do not comment on a single projection view we comment on pelvis including both hips because the rays the x ray rays are different at the single pelvis and when we are taking the both pelvis is it clear yes sir yes, same sir. thing yes. happens same thing happen you take a post operative x ray don't take a single you have to take a pelvis then only you will be see whether your acetabulum is antiverted or retroverted and the angle also changes this is a very important finding for all of you okay okay sir yes sir yes yeah so these were cadaveric specimen now this is very important to see the x ray uh, this is the the x ray alignment this is the sacroiliac uh, coccyx and this should be right in the center if the, there is slight obliquity and this distance is fixed actually if there is obliquity then you will not be able to see the cross crossover sign so male usually is 3.2 cm distance and female is 4.7 cm is this distance distance when you use 1.2 meter uh, x ray tube distance now you see here this is shifted so you may not be able to uh, you see the opposite side we are not able to see 
because the rays have shifted on this side and we are not able to see crossover sign. So there is a rotation of the pelvis has taken place. Pelvis has taken place. So how the X-ray is also is very imp uh, very important. Then only you can realize these are uh, crossover sign. If there is an increased pelvic tilt, now very carefully see here. These we call as eyes. Okay. This okay, and you see their eyes are broad here, broad. That means this pelvis is flexed. Clear? So yes, that, ha, that's why crossword sign is gone. Crossword sign is gone. This we have got a crossword sign here bilaterally. This crossword sign you are because the eye is too much a big opening, big opening. We see this in ankylosing spondylitis, very common because pelvis is flexed. So you see a very broad, uh, broad eyes in the obturator, obturator foramens, obturator. So how you take an X-ray, how you analyze the X-ray is very important to rely on a crossword sign. You just cannot take a single X-ray like I go and say this is a crossword sign. It's just not possible. So you have to identify center. You have to identify distance between the sacrum and the pubic symphysis. You have to get the pelvis x-ray properly and your obturator foramen should be equal on the both the side. Then only you can realize, realize. You see how the rotation has changed. This, uh, this is a small uh, obturator foramen. This is a big obturator foramen. And that's the way it changes. So x-ray is very important. So our technicians are to be very important. So crossover sign is over. Second sign, ischial spine prominence, ischial spine sign. So ischial spine is a pointed, very, very pointed process that extends from posterior border of the superior aspect of the ischium. Look at that, posterior border of the superior part of the ischium at the level of the lower border, exactly lower border of the stabulum. It is easily seen on a standard AP radiograph as a triangular small shaped uh, radio opaque structure that points medially from the pelvic brim towards the pelvic inlet. So this is the di direction we have. It has been noticed that the process often is more prominent in patient with estabular retroversion and often is hidden behind the estabulum in patient with normal antiverted estabulum. So this becomes a very prominent in a retroverted estabulum, which I'll show you on the x-rays. X -rays. So once you see this sign, that means there's a chance that this patient has got a retroverted estabulum. So this is called ischial spine sign. Look at this. Uh, that is anterior posterior crossing already in this patient. And this is the area of the ischial sign. Can you see all of you ischial spine here? Yes, sir. That is a prominent ischial spine. That itself indicates whenever you see a ischial spine prominent, try and see the crossover sign also. Probably it will be there. It will be there your X, if the X-rays, your X-rays are good. Then only you will be able to see. So this is a second sign of pincer. The third sign is a lateral center edge angle. Lateral center edge angle. There is an angle between the joining the center of the femoral head and outer margin of the stabular with vertical vertical is a lateral center edge angle. It's called CE angle. Normal angle is 25 to 39. It increases with the depth of the stabulum that uh, that is over coverage. Okay, common sense here also. So the angle increases more than 40 degrees. That means there's a chance that the patient has a pincer, pincer effect. So that is the angle we point out, center of the head, a vertical line, and an edge, edge angle. This angle is between 20, 20, 25 to 30, 39. And if this angle increases, increases, that means there's an over coverage of the stabulum, that means it's likely to be pincer. That is the third important uh, sign. The next is stabular index. Stabular index. Uh, <coughs> So this index, index lies between the line joining the inner edge of the stabulum. There is an inner edge. This is the inner edge of the stabulum, stabulum, and outer edge of the stabulum. Outer edge of the stabulum with horizontal, horizontal is known as a stabular index. Should be positive, should be positive normally. Becomes negative as the stabulum deepens. This goes right inside, and that's why 
uh, you will you will have uh, the need a negative uh, sign on the on this on this patients so that is called a stabular index and the, the same will be continued slightly uh, known as the extrusion index extrusion index so uh, this is the what we do normally this is the lateral margin of the stabulum this is the center of the this is the medial most medial margin of the head we draw a vertical line here then we know a dash is up to the lateral margin and then we pass we put a tangent on the margin of the uh, head and this distance is known as e dash so we index we calculate uh, extrusion index e dash this is a small portion e dash upon a dash plus e dash plus e dash and normal it is just about 0 0.25 decrease uh, it decreases found in pincer type because this is gone inside so the e dash increases the number the distance increases and that increases the stabular uh, that will uh, reduce and that will be in, uh, commonly called as extrusion index when is less than 0 0.25 that means that the head has gone inside inside so that is the another important extrusion index then the fifth sign is posterior wall sign posterior wall sign posterior wall line should pass exactly to the center of the femoral head femoral head if the if that line goes lateral that means it is the, the that means the deep establum if it is on the medial side that means the head is very large head is large now you look at this this is the this this is a posterior wall posterior wall it is quite deep here so it should have been in the center here so at least two or three millimeter this this has gone away gone away so same thing on the x-ray this is a circle which we draw, draw that's called the most circle from the center and you look at this this is the posterior posterior lip or posterior wall and the center is on the medial side that means this is a over coverage establishment likely to have a protrusive type of effect likely to have a pincer effect os ossicle there is something a small ossicle on the labral side that means this patient had a repeated trauma and has done a calcification calcification in the labral area and that is called os, uh, os ossicle or os ostabulum a small accessory ossicle at the lateral margin of the ostabulum develops due to constant wear and tear these accessory ossicles are known as os acetabuli so whenever you see os ossicle there is a chance that this gentleman is has a repeated trauma uh, that is about the uh, discussed on the pincer side okay now we'll come to cam side what is mean by cam is a non spherical head actually there the head was spherical here the head is large and non spherical so this looks like what is called as a pistol grip the head looks like a pistol grip pistol grip uh, the there is an abnormal of the head offset the hops offset is large and that's why it is not allowing the head to go inside offset is much more larger that will show you what how we measure the offset third is engagement in the deflection and rotation increases the shearing forces and outside in abrasion of the acetabular cartilage outside in the head is going inside the head is rubbing on the acetabular side and getting the cartilage damage cartilage damage leading to again labral uh, labral uh, avulsion anterior superior part of the anterior superior part of the labrum so it looks like a pistol grip deformity loss of normal femoral concavity at the level of the outer surface of the edge of the femur so pistol grip and loss of normal contour which on the x-ray i will show you look at this extremely clear are you with me yes sir yes sir yes sir this is totally different and you see sir. the amount of newborn sir. formation taken ah yes one second sir i just want to make uh, one announcement uh, one message was there that, that this meeting is going to end in 10 minutes due to that time limit of zoom so oh, okay, if okay. we get okay if we get discontinued we will start again in 5 minutes
after 5 minutes okay okay so if we get if we get discontinued okay, okay sir okay, okay continue sir continue continue sir so if you see this this is something totally abnormal it's, it's like a pistol grip deformity and this junction because as you flex internal rotate it will go and hit the hit this area and you will start the the uh, early osteoarthritic changes by lateral chondral damage all that will start the mainly abrasive activity takes place in this is the junction so this is the same patient this is a magnified view and that's that's an abnormal head neck junction junction and this is the pistol group see this is what happens cam 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 is projecting part of the rotating wheel or shaft that strikes at the level of one or more points in a circular path as the hip flexes and rotates just on one part it will just hit so this is something like a this is cam clear yes sir yes sir ha ah. so this is normal pincer i had told you there is a over coverage okay i am coming yes, to cam yes, this is a junction is abnormal you have to just remember that in exam there is more than enough because examiners may confuse you so very classical different okay so if you remember these two figures there is more than enough for you to know what is pincer and what is cam okay that's a normal and here in uh, pincer time it was over coverage here there is a junction is not good that's not anatomical so it is every time it goes inside it hits here hits here and it does not allow to go inside and so does not allow to go it inside and that's a junction and also sometimes the offset changes that will come to it so so this is the bump okay and now as you flex rotate this bump hits here bump hits here and that's a that's a starting point of osteoarthritis so these are this is the same you see this uh, a circle which is more circle and you see this is abnormal junction in this area there is a second more x -ray, second by a patient's x ray and if you look at the mr of this patient where we sometimes you we are not able to see in a very small areas that's why mr is a gold standard for fai and if you look at this picture very you see there is a lateral tear all of you can see well and yes. as well as there is a junction look at this bone here so this is a junctional bone which is a abnormal head neck junction and that's a very classical classical of cam classical of cam so we do measure uh, for this cam Uh, we do measure two things one is alpha angle and second is offset so how do we measure alpha angle alpha angle is the angle between the femoral head neck this is the uh, femoral uh, femoral head neck axis this is the axis of the center of the center of the neck this is the center of the head and the line joining the center of the femoral head to the <coughs> head and the head neck interface so this is the this is the circle here okay and this is the uh, anterior uh, anterior part of the neck where it just goes in the hits the exactly a circle and from there we draw a line and this is the angle is known as a alpha normal angle is less than 55 degrees 55 degrees now if this increases that means that means there is something abnormal here at the junction and an alpha angle then increases that means it has got a uh, usually a a cam mechanism cam mechanism so alpha angle is around 55 so you can understand again i'm repeating center of the axis center of the head here a tangent uh, there is a uh, anterior uh, anterior neck which hits the circle here and from there we take a uh, uh, one line and this is known as alpha angle so but the x ray has to be very classical lateral without that you can't measure this and that's why it is possible for us to measure in mri very well <clears throat> so the same is continued as a offset so we have already drawn these two lines and then we'll pass another tangent from the superior aspect of the head and this distance we will measure that is known as a femoral offset uh, if the abnormal is uh, abnormal is uh, less than 
is less than 10. So if this gets reduced, if this gets reduced, this won't, this, this will, what happens is they get a repeated impeachment. So camp type, which we discussed was pincer is the younger females, ballet dancers and all that. Here, these are the male patients which are common. So pin, pincer is common in females. This is common in male patients. Primary femoral abnormality. There is the stabulum. Here is the, here is the femoral head. A spherical head, which is not allowing. Femoral head jams into the acetabular rim, share forces on the labrum, cartilage, and diffuse cartilage damage. Here, the cartilage damage is much more diffuse compared to uh, pincer type. Pin pincer is very localized. Localized, anteriorly there, and posteriorly because of the contracope injury. But here, there is a, this is much more abrasive phenomena takes place. Uh, the <coughs> cam time FAI, radiographic signs, pistol grip deformity, CCD angle less than 125, that's sometimes like coxavara, horizontal growth plate sign, alpha angle more than 55, femoral head joint junction less than 8 millimeter, and femoral retroversion. There, it was acetabular retro, retroversion. Here, there's a femoral retroversion. So that is, these are the classical phenomena we do see in these patients. Uh, Toxavara, cam type, abnormal located, uh, located in the neck, decreased cap, uh, CCD. Uh, normal is between 125 and 135. If the angle is of Coxavara is less than 115, it usually suggests because these are the patients at the age of 40 or 50, they will get arthritis. Very common phenomena. And this is one of the X-ray of our own patient. Uh, look at this. This is normal, is around, one, around 125, 30, and this is certain degree of coxavara, and you see the joint reduction and arthritis changes. So this is, uh, uh, this is something.